Welcome, welcome. I am Dr. Patrice Berry, licensed clinical psychologist, and here I share legal and entertainment news from a psychological perspective. Excited to be doing this first live of the new year. Let me know how things sound today. And I want to give credit where credit's due. So I was planning to talk about the Adelson family. Someone asked me to cover that. And then I saw the lawyer, you know, I saw this video and I have it linked down in the down in the description. If you haven't already seen it, he does a phenomenal job covering the legal aspects of this case. I'm going to be covering it from a psychological perspective. So does Sarah Boone have a new defense? She has she's on her seventh defense lawyer. And I took some notes from Peter's video because to go deeper into some of the psychological things that it sounds like they want their expert witness to have the ability to dig into and talk about. Please let me know if you all have questions as we're going, and we will go on ahead and start with a recap. So Sarah Boone, this is a case out of Florida, and a few years ago, years ago, y'all y'all know all the specific dates. What happened was she, <laughs> Sarah, I can't with you. Sarah, please stop. <laughs> Nobody's ever, <sighs> um, in my opinion, I think Dr. Lewis's credibility, uh, no, not, not Dr. Lewis. We will just say that right there. So with this case, she was arrested after her boyfriend was found deceased and he had he was in a suitcase. So sometimes people call this the suitcase unaliving situation. And I want to talk about blackout alcoholism because it sounds like that might be something that the defense wants her expert to talk about because right afterwards, her story seemed to be a little all over the place. And based on the interview with her husband, it does sound like she has a history of some problematic drinking. That's based on what her husband has said. Let's do my disclaimer. While I am a licensed psychologist, I have nothing to do with this case. These are my opinions. This is not a psychological evaluation. And anytime I talk about these topics, I also include resources. So I did another video on a teacher that was arrested for showing up drunk to school. And in the resource, like in the description of that video, I include if somebody is having problematic drinking, here are some resources and tools for people to get help and support. Substance use and abuse, typically there is some difficulty with coping. There's something else going on and there is treatment that can be be helpful for that. Oh, yes. And so if y'all can go on ahead and hit that like, and if you like content like this, go on ahead and subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. I have two new mods that y'all will see in the chat. We have our mod training next week. And yes. Um, so with Sarah, oh, okay. So let's start with the 911 call. And I have the links to all these, um, to all the full videos down below. Y'all let me know. So the video of him in the suitcase, I think that one is a little triggering, but what she says, I think is pretty important. So I will give a warning when I'm about to play that part. Okay. So let's start with the 911 video or the recording from 911. The location of your emergency. 4748 Brant Court, apartment three. 4748, what's the street name? I'm going to fast forward just a little bit. I mean, do not hang up. Going to fast forward just a little bit. Fire risk. That's the location, Murphy. That's good. No, two, please don't leave. Four, seven, four, eight. So I believe she's talking to her ex-husband in that moment because in in the police body cam footage, what happened was she woke up. She allegedly she found him in the suitcase 
deceased. And then she called her ex-husband. Her ex-husband had been trying to get a hold of her all morning to confirm if she was going to pick up their son because it was it was her visitation day and he was just confirming, are you going to pick him up? And so I think that no, don't leave. That was to her her ex-husband. He does stay and talk to the police. And I want to play parts of that as well. France Lane, apartment three. France Court. France Court. Yes. Okay, just near McKenzie Drive. I don't know where that is. Okay, okay. It's Hillwood Park Apartments. I'm not making ah, commercials, commercials. Y'all know. Years ago, I Give me a second. A better... Okay, four seven four eight France, correct? Correct. All right, correct. Now tell me exactly what happened there. Uh, my boyfriend and I were playing last night, and mm -hmm. I put him in a case, and we were playing. And, okay. So I want to pause it there. I put him in a suitcase and we were playing. So I don't know how y'all play hide and seek, but when I play hide and seek, normally what happens is the person hides and then you go and find them. Like it wouldn't be hide and seek if you zip someone up in a suitcase. Like if you hid them there would be no seeking. So it was very odd to me. So I'm just talking about to me. To me, it would be very odd that somebody would be playing hide and seek and they would intentionally hide the person. All right. Like that's where the story is not making any sense. Starting out. All right. Let's, let's listen to a little bit of this. I kind of hide and seek kind of thing. So I fell asleep and I woke up and he was dead in the suitcase. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Right, okay. What's your apartment number? Okay. So I am going, cause then 911 asked her to do uh, chest compressions just because that's just what they're trained to do. I would be interested to see if they're, cause if, if somebody does chest, chest compressions, you can Sometimes it can show up on the body. I don't know if she, I, I think he was clearly deceased and I don't even know if she did the chest compressions or not. I, I don't know that if that, but like, eh, it's, it's a bit of a mess. So now let's get to the body cam footage. And all of this is going to play in to the possible defense that I think she might try to use in this case. She gets irritated with the officers. Uh, she keeps asking them for something to drink. I am starting this about three minutes in. Um, and okay, y'all y'all let me know because there are points where the officers seem to be annoyed by her. And her defense wants to bring in a personality disorder expert or possibly talk about personality disorders. And we're not sure if they're looking at personality disorder for Sarah or for her ex. I believe it's Jorge. I'm, I'm bad with names. George. Let me. I, I did write it down. What was his? George Torres. So that was the name of her boyfriend. Gonna fast forward a little bit. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Cool. You can't go back to that. What's going on? What? Who is he to you? Boyfriend? Yes. Because for like three and a half years, what happened? He and I we drank last night. We had a. Can you pass this to the uh, around to the FD guy? Stop. Okay, so y'all remember she said we drank last night because in the interrogation something. So we're let's. Let's listen to this part. They need to sign that for sure. They're with me. So they're not leaving. Okay. I think I'll walk around. No, no, no. You two of them have to. This might be a real thing. But each of them has to put their name in. Normally, we all just I just put everybody. Yeah, you call it Um, what's going on? I just got here, so fill me in. No problem. Like, you and I are together. We've been doing some artwork together. It was weird that she started with the puzzle and the artwork. Like, he is deceased. And so. 
when I when I follow some of the forensic experts that talk about body language and talking about understanding if someone's lying or not, sometimes a person will start to give odd details that aren't necessarily related. And maybe it is, maybe to her mind, in her mind talking about putting the puzzle and then starting that game, which I have doubts of whether it was a game or not, but okay. You're putting a puzzle together? Yes, we have a puzzle that we started in there. Okay. We've been doing art, trying to take stuff off the wall to, to make new art kind of there, like having a good time with one another. But we're drinking, we had a bottle of wine last night. Okay. Wow. So then it's like, we decided to play hide and seek, right? Okay. So he gets in the suitcase, okay? Who is this guy? That's my ex-husband, my former husband. How did he, he live here with you guys? No. I called him over here. Okay, okay. I didn't know what to do. Okay. I didn't know what to do. Okay. So then he came over here. Here, let's talk in private, okay? I called... You guys. Mm -hmm. I tried giving I, I, the problem is, is yeah. I fell asleep. I fell asleep. When did you do CPR? This morning. When I Listen, if you want to become all these commercials, I know they they know that we're all right. Means real. I found it before you called. Yes. It's one o'clock right now. So to me, she seems irritated and agitated that the officer is asking understandable questions. To me, the questions the officer is asking her are are definitely un understandable. I tried. I was awake, but I actually got out of the bed at like 1230, whatever. So I came downstairs hey, honey, brother, and I was like, oh, he's in the suitcase still. That's when I found him and I took him out okay. and I tried doing CPR and then I called him and then I called you guys. Did he get here before the fire department got here? Who? Your husband? Yes. Or your ex-husband? Yes. Okay. Where did he live at? Uh, right down the street. Okay. So you were playing and who zipped him up in I did, okay. but then I fell asleep. Okay, okay. So she admits to zipping him up in the suitcase, which I think when you see the video that she recorded on her phone, and I think if she had remembered that that video was on her phone, I don't think she would have told the officers to look on her phone to find the evidence of the past because um, there was um, DV between the, the two of them and the expert that they want to use, that the defense wants to use. Also, they also want her to talk about uh, DV as well. All right. I don't, I wasn't here. I'm just trying to figure out what happened. I fell asleep. I don't know if you suffocated or if I had an aneurysm or a heart attack or what. what? Kind of medical? So to me, she doesn't seem distressed that he's actually deceased. Like she seems more distressed that she doesn't remember what happened. Like that's, she doesn't seem at all upset that he's not alive anymore, in my opinion. In my opinion. None that I know of. None that you know of. None that I know of. No. 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 no All we had was a bottle of wine. Literally, just a bottle of wine. Okay. Doing puzzle artwork. Then we decided to play hide and seek. Mm -hmm. That's all that happened. Okay. Okay. And once that's that's just that's not how you play hide and seek. I'm gonna make that side bigger. That is not at all how you play hide and seek. I am gonna check out the chat real quick. Um Exactly. Sarah. So Sarah Adams. So Sarah Boone seems more irritated by the situation. And once again, entrap and wait. Like I just, huh? Laura, welcome. In the police interview, she says, even with everything going on with our jobs and exes and all the other stuff, she didn't have a job. She didn't have an ex-wife. Why do you think she's literally talking about herself as if she is exactly as if she's in the same boat as, as Jorge. So <clears throat> in my opinion, I think, she likely has her own substance 
she probably has an issue with alcohol based on the statement that her husband made. And we are going to play that. This is my opinion just based on watching this, based on the publicly available information. It sounds like she was inconsistent with, with her parenting. And it's almost like she's trying to say, save me. Like, don't, don't blame this on me. I'm the victim. And individuals who have been through a lot, and I do think if she's found guilty, there probably is some significant trauma in her early childhood. This is my guess. I don't know this for sure. To me, in my opinion, she shows possible signs of borderline personality disorder, narcissistic, and uh, narcissistic personality disorder. She, she shows some possible traits of both of those. It is, it is all about her because even with the officer, she keeps asking for, for something to drink. Like, can I please, can I please like take care of me, take, take care of me. And something that I've found and is that sometimes when there's substance use or abuse, there's also codependence that sometimes goes along with that. And codependence, my friend Rosa Jones, she she describes it as over-functioning in other people's lives and under-functioning in my own. I think she probably like, mm, like, Maybe she thought she could help him because their relationship does not sound like it was safe. Now, what she did was not appropriate. And the video is very sinister and, and sadistic to me. The, the video that she recorded on, that she allegedly, I guess, recorded on, on her phone, that video is, ugh. so those are, those are some of my thoughts on that. Okay, good. Thank you, Nancy, for that. Um, but I think sometimes, I thought sometimes they could tell if people have done CPR or not. I could be wrong, all right? I just like following this, this court stuff. She's the one that zipped him in there. I could see it being a game of like, oh, let's see if you can fit. But knowing that she wasn't going to let, let him out. And we are going to dig deeper into like alcoholic blackout. How in control was she or was she not? It's my understanding in the state of Florida, if somebody voluntarily consumes a substance that does not, that they can't use that as a, as a reason to be found not guilty. They, it can possibly be a mitigating factor. That's what I learned from the lawyer, you know. All right. So I know. So that's, that's what I found out from there. Um, the officer was so patient. Okay. <laughs> so I think the officers, so, and I encourage parents to do the same thing. When you want information from someone, if they are clearly, like if something, like you have to not react. So to me, the officer, the only thing the officer is doing is like, help me. Y'all are playing hide and seek. Like, yeah, yeah. And I did this. Oh, and like, they're just like, help me understand. Tell me more of the story as like the officer knows that all of this is being recorded. The officer said earlier, I think this might, this might be a thing. This, I, it just, it sounds very, very odd to me. I don't know. So antisocial personality disorder is the one personality disorder that you, that can't be a mitigating factor. So antisocial personality disorder, that's an individual that um, goes against societal norms. Uh, sometimes that's where we find psychopathic or sociopathic traits. I did a full video kind of breaking all of, all of that down. And to me, her affect changes when she thinks she's not being understood and when she's not being heard and when she's trying to say, validate me, Val see me, give me attention. Let's focus on like, in, in, in my opinion, I also, I, I don't believe it was only one. Uh, normally individuals that have issues with um, substances, what they tell you you can normally at least double it. Like there, it was probably more than just one, one bottle. It sounds like she was pretty, um, she, she seemed to hide some of her substance use in my opinion, in my opinion. All right. Oh, okay. So you feel like she was forcing the emotion. So I, I work. So there, 
she, okay. So I enjoy working with individuals with borderline personality disorder because often what happened in childhood is that was an individual that in order to get needs met, they had to make their emotions very, very big. That that they, they often come from very uh, difficult childhoods Um, often very severe trauma. And this is the personality style that develops. It might have kept them safe at one time. And letting go of those traits and symptoms can be very, very difficult. I I only diagnose personality disorders in individuals 18 and up. I have had some teens come to me where other people diagnose personality disorders. To me, the issue with diagnosing personality disorders before the age of 18 is that you don't know the impact and role that the family is having on their personality development. Like you just like, I can I can never know for sure is this individual 100% safe in this in this environment. If there are signs that someone isn't safe then I, you know, I legally ethically do what I what I have to do, but that's that's where I am. I am catching up on chat. Ooh, all right. So um, histrionic personality disorder is somebody that's like, look at me, attention, attention. Um, I believe that diagnosis was thrown out with Amber Heard. I want to say histrionic and borderline personality disorder, the phenomenal, amazing Dr. Curry. I believe those were the personality features. She didn't meet criteria for either one of those diagnoses, but that there were features of those of, of those diagnoses. And that's where in therapy, my goal, individuals that come to me who are survivors, is to help them see their their power in a healthy way. I to me, the video where she's kind of that she recorded allegedly on her phone, where he's in the suitcase and she's talking to him, it sounded like to me that she was enjoying having that power. And that she was enjoying getting him back. Now, did she intend for him to not survive? I don't, I don't, I don't know that 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 was, I don't know what her intentions were. I do know that that's what happened. And I believe she's charged with second degree capital M. I think that is what she is, she is charged with. All right. That that video is so difficult to watch. I am going to give a trigger warning. I, I do just want to play about 30 seconds of it, um, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. So I I will give a warning before before I before I play that one. It is it is a bit of a mess. Um, so I like I said, I thoroughly enjoy the individuals that I work with that have borderline personality disorder and they're actively working on 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 their symptoms. Dialectical behavior therapy for some people can be very, very effective. The creator of that program, Dr. Marsha Linehan, she has, border, she's, she's since come out and said that that was a diagnosis that, that she struggled with and she created dialectical behavior therapy to, to help herself. And um, I often teach them mindfulness skills because they, it, they often struggle with being in the moment. They often struggle with interpersonal relationship skills. We're also going to talk about um, some, they have research personality disorders, like what percentage of people that are incarcerated, what percentage of them have personality disorders. Now, compared to the whole population, to the normal population, it, but like within a prison setting, what, what percentage do? Once again, personality disorders are a spectrum, okay? So, if somebody has BPD and they're looking for a therapist, I often recommend like when they're just calling around trying to find a therapist, unless they find one that on their website says, I specialize in treating dialectical, ba- that I specialize in treating borderline personality disorder, that they just say, I have complex trauma. I have difficulties regulating my emotions, that they talk about the symptoms and not necessarily the the diagnosis until they found a therapist that is trained in maybe dialect in uh, DBT or trained in whatever treatment modality that they're that they're looking for, because some therapists will will not call someone back or won't because sometimes people have in their minds what that might look like. And um, I, I, I work with people that they received that that diagnosis years ago and they are they they're not really 
um, exhibiting some of those same symptoms, or they also have bipolar disorder. And when their medications are working the way that, that it's supposed to, they often function relatively well. And so um, we're all about breaking stigma here. All right. So we like to nerd out and we like to break stigma here. All right. Uh, all right. Let's see. There's a lot of stigma with that particular diagnosis. Y'all are phenomenal. Welcome, welcome. Ah, yes. Yes. And so there are intensive outpatient programs. Um, I wish I could highlight a comment without. Okay, yes. So because um, there are often um, intensive outpatient, which is where you go to therapy. Sometimes it's three times a week. Sometimes it's five times a week. And because uh, it's often for an individual that's struggling with those chronic uh, unaliving thoughts, or like if there are major safety issues, if they are engaging in significant harm to themselves, like that's where they people can often do some specific programs, but you need to have a therapist that's trained and that's comfortable because the clients that I work with, they might come in screaming, yelling, they might come in very, very escalated and just listening and validating. And we're often able to get them to a much more regulated state by the end. But at the beginning of that session, they were in crisis. <laughs> and then we were able to kind of talk, but we, we they did not have to go get because um, they, they were safe. They were able to be safe. With uh, DBT, we also talk about riding the wave, like riding the emotion, because often emotions change. Emotions, they just they just change for, for anyone. And that often we can just ride it out. That if I'm in a crisis in this moment, sometimes just waiting an hour, sometimes waiting a period of time and, and still being safe. So distracting myself, doing things that I enjoy, using those skills. Um, because often the way I view uh, personality disorders is that they are skills deficits. I view personality disorders as skills deficits and that these individuals need to learn certain skills. The same way with ADHD, it, there are certain executive function deficits. Some people talk about ADHD being more of a motivation deficit versus an attention deficit because attention on things you love I could do this all day, but going to write my my case notes or report, it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> that's that's going to take forever. That is going to take forever. Sarah, thank you so much. <laughs> Sarah, that bar is low. Better better than Dr. Lewis. I mean, I I think my I'm sorry. I won't I won't say what I was thinking. I I like humor, but I don't want it to get me in trouble. <laughs> that 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 bar wasn't very high, Sarah. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't very high. <laughs> All right, so let's get in to the um, let's get into the the ex husband, okay? Because I think his part was was pretty interesting. This is another commercial. Let's mute this. <sighs> I think they knew I was going to cover parts of the. Hey, okay, so you don't live here in this house. No, no, no. Down in uh, Lake Granada Cove. Down Lake Granada Cove. Okay. Yeah. So, kind of tell me how you came here today, or? Well, I've been um, calling. Come down here because we got a song. I don't know. I've been calling since. You've been calling uh, your, your ex wife or current yes, wife? Yes, yes. Okay. No, 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 no. Ex wife. We've okay. been divorced about a year and a half. Um, Sorry, he's playing ball. About 11 30 is when I started calling Go to ahead. find out his. Supposed to be her day. So, um, um, okay. She's generally not very good about always doing it. She's ten four. They called back and said she was still there, or she came back. Um, so I was calling to find out if she was going to be getting him or not today. Oh, cool. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. So um, I started calling like eleven thirty. Called every half hour, hour or so, and then she was back and said the lobby. Finally got a hold of her at twelve forty nine. Which is when she told me what was going on and if I'd come over here. So I came over. She called at 1245. Yeah. Okay. Or 1249. 1249. Um, got over here, told her she needed to call 911, get somebody over here. And then uh, basically she said she needed to go outside, have a drink and a cigarette. I walked back out of the house because I didn't. Really Who called? There. Did you call or did she call? Well, I called. She called me back when I was on my.
I wonder if they did a uh, a blood alcohol, a BAC on her. I, I don't think they did. And he might have been saying drink of water. I, I don't know what what type of drink he was talking about. I It would have been good for me to know that morning at 12, what, whatever time they're, they're all getting here, what was her blood alcohol content at, at that point. I mean, and it could have been totally sober. It just, it would have been interesting for to me to know that. On my way to make sure I was coming out. But um, I called her initially. One second, okay? But I called her initially. Yeah. Once again, so that was her, that was Sarah asking for something to drink because they won't allow her to go back. She has a Dr. Pepper, I think, sitting in the kitchen or something, and she wants to go back in to to get it, and they're not letting her. Your car, by any chance. I don't think so. Kind um, of fast forward a little bit. Uh, I called her first. Okay. Um, trying to find out if she's going to pick up Lucas. That's what she told me everything was going on. Um, I got my stuff together, put the puppy up in his crate. Um, when I was starting to drive over here is when she called me to make sure I was coming, and then I got over here. Right did you go inside and see and then I, I i walked inside the front um i didn't see the little front tile area come I, on step this way mm -hmm. i saw legs um i, I just didn't really want to be in there around it so um <laughs> i told her well I just for the sake of this crime right. scene i want to know if i were to find your footprint it would be because you went this far into the house so did you actually make entry i don't past think the I, threshold i don't think i ever made it to the carpet i think okay. it was just in that um I've been over here before. Right, so right, I mean, right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, I don't think I've stepped past you that um, okay. tile area. Okay. So um, I, I touched doorknob. I don't think I touched anything in the kitchen. I don't know if that really matters. Yeah. But. Okay. So that's pretty much it. To me, he seems really calm as well. But like, I think he's used to there possibly being issues going on in her life. So, cause I think her, um, the, her, her boyfriend that's not here anymore. He had been to, to jail multiple times because of their DV. He was supposed to be in certain classes, which, um, the ex-husband's going to get into in just a moment. So what you have. Well, sit tight for us. Um, we're going to make a few phone calls and then we'll go from there. Do okay, you know if he fine. has um, any med uh, medical issues or Okay, but you've met him before. Because... I've met him before, yes. Okay. yes. They've got a whole fun history. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. you guys have called him twice. Uh, For the two of them? Yeah, he's been around for like five times. Or so. Really? Okay, I'm not familiar with him. So, I haven't been here personally. It's so they have he, a... He's currently on parole because of it. So, um, because of domestic violence with her? Yes. yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, so last time he know. got... um. Trial, something or other. He had to go to a um, domestic violence class. Okay. I know he was doing it at a parole officer, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I mean, like, every time she'd have him arrested, the next day she was trying to get him bailed out. So, mm -hmm. I, I don't... Every time she had him arrested, the next day she was trying to get him out of jail, which is very common with a, um, if somebody is still caught in that cycle of of violence and i have links to resources down in the description let me come back to the chat real quick i'm just going to come back just to me that poor guy good gosh um all right The poor, and because they they had to continue to to co-parent, and I am surprised that she was allowed to have visitation at her house. And I don't know if that's just the 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 father didn't try to not have that happen because in Virginia, so or maybe the child just wasn't exposed to it. So maybe he was never around when when it happened. But if it was my child and y'all are going back and forth like this, y'all's relationship is toxic. You are having um like uh, I uh, I would be talking to somebody to see about about that. Um, 
the the things that that he's describing uh, that he's describing I've I've definitely heard before because within a toxic system or within a toxic cycle sometimes what can happen is that there's this recovery phase after and there can often be this trauma bond so I don't know if this was the first person she dated after her her ex-husband. I don't know what happened. Thank goodness. I, I don't know what happened in the relationship with her ex-husband. If he left her, I, I, I don't, I have no clue. I could imagine that the, if there was problematic drinking when they were together, Problematic drinking typically negatively impacts relationships if you're with somebody that has good boundaries. So when you're with somebody that's a little, mm, like that's not going to set those boundaries, that's when it's enabling. So within a dysfunctional system, we can enable one another. And the boyfriend might have enabled her drinking and there might have been some things that like... Yeah, like that that relationship it just it it doesn't sound safe at at all. It just doesn't doesn't sound safe. Um well. And so I don't know, but I because it sounds like she was only divorced for a year, but she had been dating George for for three. And so I saw George, or was it Jorge? George, I thought it was uh, y'all correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> When I, I thought I saw it, that it was, but I could, I could totally be wrong. I could have wrote it down wrong. All right. So let's do another one. The, oh my gosh, the interrogation video, because to me here, she kind of switches it a little bit and it's, Mm, sounds like she's she's trying to make it all be okay. I might, and I'll I'll note if I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Make this full screen. Just like we did yesterday. Yeah. Just like we did yesterday. Remember, I read you the right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is the exact same thing, but since I'm asking you follow up questions, I need to read them to you. Okay. Sure. All right. So you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against She should have. You have the right to talk to a lawyer before and during questioning without charge. She, she should have. If you cannot afford a lawyer and want one, one can be provided for you before questioning without In charge. In my opinion. Has anyone threatened you or promised you anything to get you to talk to me? No. And do you understand what I just read you? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So this morning we went to his autopsy um, and we were informed of some injuries that he has um, by the doctor. So I want... Where? Um, so he's got, and she's probably upset in this moment that they are talking about his injuries because I think this is the first time she's been arrested for something that's happened to him because I think she still sees herself as the victim in this situation, in my opinion. <coughs> Scratch marks to his the police officer. She's going to do a bunch of coughing. I'm sorry. Like she's, she's, she's going to cough a few times back i know what that's from okay and um it's called a contusion do you know what a contusion is so like basically you're getting hit and then you know you you, you get a mark from it you'll get bruising like some, okay. someone hit you or something like mm -hmm. that it's called a, a contusion so he had some injuries to his left shoulder um he had um he had a cut near his like lip we could see we could see his um, his mouth was a little. Uh, I haven't laid a hand on him. Okay. I <coughs> also too. I he fell off. She's being really defensive, in my opinion, about I didn't lay a hand on him. But but I think you might have zipped up the suitcase. Ugh. Off my son's bike. Okay. So I don't know. And he's notorious for running into the wall. Or the hall tree, so okay. I. Okay. What, I what about the scratches? Because there's also sex. Yes. Okay. Because there's also like a like a scratch on like the back of his neck, like kind of like going, but it's like going straight across. I have no idea what that's from. 
<clears throat> and they're all recent. Like they 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 occurred recently. It wasn't something that occurred post or that occurred a week ago or two days ago, three days ago. They definitely occurred, you know, the night leading up to when he was. In all case. honesty, all honesty, we have not gotten into it. Okay. That's why, like, the only thing I thought you guys were going to ask me about, which I was going to be honest with you anyway, are the scratch marks on his back. Mm -hmm. Everything else, I have no idea what it is. No okay. idea what it is. Nonetheless, I've had my son over the house, too, so. Well, your son was there when? When was he last there? Oh, gosh. Last my week? understanding, he was there, like, last Tuesday? Last, I don't know if it was Tuesday, but, yes, he was there last week, so. Well, we're talking about Sunday. Yeah. We're make, we're just talking about what occurred Sunday. Because, like I said, the injuries are, they occurred within that time period. So you're talking about day before yesterday? Sunday leading into Monday. You Where? called us yesterday at 1, so, but the incident you guys were painting and stuff the night prior. Correct. So, Y'all know I also really enjoy um, <clears throat> um, Dr. G Explains, and I watched his analysis of this. And he mentioned that some of the parts of this, it seemed like she had rehearsed or like she was prepared to answer some questions and then something she clearly was not, was not prepared for. So we're talking about Sunday and That's then into why Monday. I'm thoroughly confused because <clears throat> we had a good time mm -hmm. sitting on the back porch, having wine and smoking a couple of cigarettes and then decided to go inside and literally paint, do puzzles and play. And listen to music. That's why nobody got out of sorts. That's, this is what's mind blowing to me. Like I don't, okay. I have no clue. Nobody laid a hand on anybody. He also had, um, like on the left side of his forehead, he had basically bruising, um, and on, um, on um, like his head and his skull. I have no idea. As if something hit him. I consider have not for touched him. Trauma. I have not touched <clears throat> him. I have not touched him. Then how would you get those injuries? Tell me and we'll both know. I have not touched him. Yesterday. That tell me and we'll both know, to me, that was a little, this isn't a time for sarcasm or like, but I think this is her personality style. And when she feels cornered, in my opinion, to me, she she sometimes attacks. Um, it's really funny. I, I have to tell y'all, thank y'all for being here. So I was a little late because I was looking for my for my AirPods and I forgot that I put them I I put them in, in a in a in a pocket. <laughs> I've mm, gotta gotta love that. I was I was late because I was I was looking for these. And I just, and they were, they were right there. We'll keep going. Today, when we took photographs of your overall body um, and they did the buccal swabs, did they go under your fingernails? No. Okay. Are you willing to let us? Absolutely. Swab underneath your fingernails? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea and I don't want to seem out of sorts, but I have no idea. We had a good day. Mm -hmm. It was a good day. We've had good days lately, mm -hmm. even considering everything that's going on with our jobs and life in general and ex-wives and everything. It's been good. Like, I don't even know where this is coming from. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. The last physical was probably, you said, I think, what, a month ago? Commercials. commercials. So while we're pausing this commercial, somebody had a comment. I believe it was Valor. Let me pause this and come back to the comments because I believe her defense should be battered woman syndrome because I felt exactly what she was meaning when she was talking to him. Um, and uh, if, if she hadn't also said that they were having a good day and I think, I think parts of that might be difficult for a jury and I don't think a jury would find her guilty of first degree. I, I don't think. I do think a jury could find her guilty of second degree or manslaughter. I think either one of those, a jury could potentially find her guilty of one of those. 
to me that that video. But I think that's where the defense wants to get the psychologist's perspective of what type of person might be sympathetic to her. Like I, that's I'm I'm thinking they want some feedback for juror questions of what type of juror might have an open mind when it when it comes to her and what types of jurors should they maybe exclude on 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 the jury i think i think that's why the the defense wants to bring that um that that person in in my opinion she seems to really like control and she seems to passionately advocate for herself in very very long letters and she's she can be a little demanding and so I've had individuals, I think, maybe call me somewhere like six to eight times in in one day. And and that's where sometimes I have to set a boundary of, you know, like if please give me 24 hours to to respond. And that's where having a therapist that does full DBT. So I don't do a full DBT program. So with a full DBT program that offers individual, group, and crisis support, a person has 24-7 crisis. My clients can message me if they're in crisis. Now, now if they can't reach me, they need to use the other resources that we that we that we have available. But if they do have an issue that that comes up, they are able to to reach out. Um, but if somebody starts to do it excessively, that's where I, I set a boundary. Welcome, welcome to everyone in the chat. Thank you all so much for, so, um, I think a bad day to them would be, um, harm. And I don't think she thinks she did anything wrong. I think she, so her explanation of everything was that she fell asleep, was that she didn't drink that much and that she fell asleep. I think that I didn't drink that much. I don't know that that's true. And she might have to either take the stand or an expert might have to come on the stand and talk about her her drinking. Like she might have to be really, really honest about her her drinking. And these are my opinions, my thoughts. All right, let's let's keep going. It's muted. Right? You said that was a okay, month a few ago. weeks, give or take. Yeah. A few weeks. That was the last like physical altercation between the two of you. Um was a month ago we hit you with a curtain rod. Yeah, with a curtain rod. That's why I can't believe you guys didn't take that either. <laughs> So she, to me, so right there, I guess maybe they didn't take that report. Maybe she called on him for that. I don't, I don't know. Like that was, that was an odd statement. They didn't really explain why that was said. But. Like we. Um, I'm, so once again, it, to me, she is trying to be like, don't look at me. Like, he, these are all the things he's done. I don't know what happened. Look somewhere else. And yet, like, ugh, this we've been good. I don't know if, like, it's since the last time he got out of jail. Like, we've been good, and he's been having his classes mm -hmm. and his seeing his probation officer, who's amazing. So, what do you mean by good? What's your definition of good? The probation means, officer? I don't know. You said you guys have been good. What's your definition? I've of been good. good. I don't think you all understand. He comes at me all the time. He comes at me. So it's either I flee or try to go upstairs and go to sleep. That's usually what it is. And I don't know if you talk to Brian about any of that, but most of the time when I flee, I go over there. So. Right, but you're saying that you guys have been good. And when I asked you yesterday, there has the last incident that you could remember was the curtain rod incident, which you said was a month ago. So give or take. Right. So what do you mean by he comes after you? Like he gets belligerently drunk. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if y'all have looked through my phone yet and too many of the pictures and the videos that I have taken. Mm -hmm. And the, at one point I started documenting everything. Okay. So you all will see in my pictures, bloody fingers, split forehead. He split my nose. I've got this. Right. I don't know. Brian told you about it, where I had to have almost what I had one really bad surgery, but then it got really, 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 really bad, where I had to go like four or five more times afterwards for them to tend to it. Mm -hmm. And then poking me in the back of the leg. Right. So it's 
Then why are you still with him? Everybody asks me that. When I tell you guys this, I really love him. Like I do. And I feel like I can help him. Like I feel like I could help him, which I did because he's come a really he came a really long way from where he was in Philadelphia to moving back to here and to dealing with everything else that he's been dealing with. Mm -hmm. I've really All right. So I hope y'all heard that because that goes into that codependent, I can save him. So I am a licensed therapist and I can't save my husband. I can't like if my child is having a mental health crisis in and of myself, like I need to get outside help. And my, my child is going to have to do some things. My husband is going. So I'm not responsible 100%, like all completely responsible for, for my child's happiness. And my child is in no way responsible for any of my happiness. So this is where we can become enmeshed. Enmeshment is where there is no... I don't know where I end and you begin. And when there's this type of trauma bond where people are are connected through their pain, through their trauma, I, I often find that they're, the person that they're bonding with is often, there might be some similar qualities to some people that have harmed, like possibly like a, a caregiver. And it, it doesn't get too Freudian, but like almost a little like, because we're constantly trying to to heal those those early childhood wounds and i like to ask my clients are we picking from our healed place or are we picking from our wounded place and we never ever want to pick a partner from the wounded place we want to pick a partner from the healed place from the part of me that is you know doing i i don't want to pick them from that from that from that hurt because I'm more likely to pick somebody that might not be safe if I pick out of that pain. Because, because what that parent showed me was not, if it was a parent that, that caused the harm, that parent was not, was not safe. But that's what I might view love is. So I've seen people have skewed views of love, have skewed views of what they deserve, what they uh, what they should and shouldn't tolerate. Um, I've also seen issues with um, self-worth. So in my opinion, she has an inflated sense of self-worth, but it's extremely fragile, which gives me that kind of possible narcissistic flair because it's this very puffed up version that is mm, doesn't seem to be grounded in in any reality which makes it very, very fragile. All right. So I, I haven't heard this. That would not surprise me if there were times when when she might have been the the aggressor as well. I that would would not surprise me. I've also seen some individuals where um, especially what can happen is there can be personality styles that are attracted to each other. So often, Individuals with borderline personality disorder, their main thing is, I hate you, don't leave me. It's this constant black and white, I, I love you, you're the best thing ever, I, I hate you, I'm never ever going to talk to you again, but this, it's this, this constant cycling and this, this, this very huge fear of rejection, abandonment, loss. Once again, often rooted very, very early on, and... Um, when I'm working with an individual with those types of traits, we often try to help them find worth and meaning outside of that individual. So if they're coming to me and they're um, unemployed and like they're they're completely dependent 100 percent on this other person that may not be safe, because I've also I've often seen. Um, individuals with borderline personality disorder, that they connect with individuals with narcissistic or possibly antisocial personality disorder. Like that's just, that's that's what what I've seen, especially the the narcissist, because at first that love is very, that, that love is very passionate. It's very, it can, mm, but it, it can be very, very toxic. And I've done past videos on signs of toxic relationships and and all of that. <laughs> I'm catching up on the comments. Uh, 
Happy New Year. Welcome, welcome. Phoenix, thank you for adding this. I also think battered woman syndrome is only a defense in a case of absolute self-defense. And that's where I think uh, if she hadn't said so much at first, but I think she desperately wanted the police to be on her side. And I think she was very comfortable talking to the police. So because I think she had called the police on him multiple times and she had she had talked with police officers, but it was always about him. It was never about her. I do, I, I will let this part play a little bit longer. We have maybe about, maybe four more minutes left on this. And then we're- Really helped him. I bailed him out of jail, what, three times. I've gone to every single hearing and every single arraignment, everything that I did for him. Gone to see all his public defenders, go to the state. I've gone to the state. I, I did everything for him because I'm trying to help him because I have, I had hope in him. She's talking about him as though he still exists. Like in that moment to me, did anyone else find that weird? To me, she, it was so like, see me, look at how awesome I am, pat me on the back. She is talking like as though he is still here. I don't, I just, I just can't. Okay, I'm going all the way to the new comments. And, and when somebody, it, it can be, so I, I am, I clearly, so sometimes I, I've had clients come to me and say, you saved me. And I'm like, oh no, <laughs> I can be the best therapist in the world. If a person chooses to not take like, like, no, you did the work. Okay. I, I gave you tools. You implemented them. I saw you once a week. Now we meet every two weeks. We might meet once a month. Like, so I did not save you. Okay. That's a healthy therapist. If if your therapist needs you to say that you that they like that they saved you, that's a red flag, huge, huge red flag, because that's where there aren't clear boundaries. So within my therapeutic relationship, I know. So that's how I can listen. Sometimes <laughs> on, on days that I'm <laughs> I have scheduled eight clients back to back. And at the end of the day, I felt, I felt, I felt fine because in those sessions, I'm not overworking people. So if, if Sarah Boone was, was my client, my goal with her would not be to get her to leave her boyfriend if he was still alive. That, that wouldn't be my goal. My goal would be to have her set one boundary. <laughs> let's just, let's just set and maintain one boundary. <laughs> Let's let you regulate your emotions. Let's have him not trigger. Let's have you take responsibility for your part. Like let's, because to me, she deflects a lot and minimizes a ton. And let's talk about a little more about your, your drinking. Like that, that would be my focus. Let's give you some, some healthy coping skills. Let's, let's replace some of these problematic ones with some, with some healthier ones that, that would be, that would be my goal. If, if, if I was, if I was her therapist, like, like she's talking about the man, like he exists. Like if, if I was his family, that would have been infuriating her sitting there being like, I, cause, cause I'm sure his family wished that, that he had let, that he had left her. Like they were toxic together. Ugh. And now what he did, so people should not harm other people, okay? What, what he did was not okay, and what she did was, was not okay. Um, there is still a part of me I don't think she meant to, I think she wanted to scare him. I think she wanted, I don't know that she meant for him to not be there. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think she meant for that. That's just my thoughts, my opinion. And I and with second degree, that's where you have to ask a lawyer. With with second degree, in in that state, I don't know if you had to intend or if your actions are so reckless that a reasonable person would know. Especially with him saying, "I can't breathe," that's the part where it's like, how is that not a capital M? Like how how is it not? So I'm gonna say capital M instead of people are so triggered by the when I when I put an S in front of capital M. I was, I, people need to come over. Like I was, I, I like saying it that way. People, people, it boosted engagement a ton by like just getting mad about, about that particular word. So we'll, we'll, we'll say capital M. And he was drunk. He 
trying. He wasn't really trying. Just, and then he starts to think about things, and it just, I think he gets overwhelmed. And then it's like, next thing I know, he's drinking. So it's like, oh, man, I know where this is going to go. So I'm going to go upstairs and read a book, or I'm going to go for a bike ride, or I'm going to do something else. Or I don't want to drink. I don't want to drink. The occasional wine, whatever, or if it's a weekend, that's when you, you have a good time. You don't have to wake up the next day. I have to wake up the next day and do things. I have to tend to Lucas. I have to take him to school. I have all this stuff to do. He doesn't know how to, I guess. So to me, in that moment, she was downplaying her own drinking, which is a bit of a red flag, in my opinion. Let's maintain himself where I can do 50 things at once and still know the 50 things more previously, prior than I need to get done. He can't process like that. He didn't process like that. So it, he would literally, not literally, but had smoke coming out of his ears. So the next thing you know, he doesn't want to deal with it. I'm going to go get something to drink. So the majority of the time, I would hang out outside or do something else because I don't want to drink. And every time, every time, his job broke his heart. And it made me sad because he had so much pride in his job. And the store that he took care of so much <laughs> totally went downhill. Mm -hmm. And that broke his heart because he had put so much work and effort into fixing it up. And his manager was awful and basically gave up on all of the employees. So I think that had a huge bearing on why he would drink so much. His ex-wife is bonkers. Mm -hmm. She was all over him all the time. Send me money, send me money, send me money. How can I send you money when I don't have a job? And he's still trying to take care of me and Lucas by paying a bill here or there, getting some groceries. So he always had something on his mind, which is why, again, I got the puzzle and the bank. Consider that New Year's rest. I just, ugh, I just can't. Right, get him off of it so we don't have a drink or he doesn't have a drink. So when you all see my. So I think she said it correct the first time. I'm going to rewind that because I think she said, so we don't have to drink. But then she changed it to he. Right, get him off of it so we don't have a drink or he doesn't have a drink. So okay. I think she slipped up because I, I think that was correct the first time. So we don't have a drink. What makes more sense to me is that they would drink together. That's what that's what makes sense to me. Okay, so that's about all that I can tolerate of, of that one. Here is my warning. We are going to switch to the one of because I do think I'm just going to play about 30 seconds of him in the 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 phone, blah, 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 him in the suitcase. Okay. So about 30 seconds. If you need to hop off and come back, please do that. Let's go on ahead. And, and this is, this is what was on her phone. Okay. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. For everything you've done to me. Sarah. Fuck you. Sarah. <laughs> Fuck you. Sarah. <laughs> Stupid. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it up. Sarah. I can't fucking breathe, babe. Seriously. Yeah, that's when you do when you choke me. So, okay, I'm gonna switch. I do not think that that video there, that is probably the defense's biggest hurdle. That video right there, because she sounds clearly intoxicated. She's slurring her words. She sounds, 
And I think in one of the interrogation videos, she said that she didn't drink that much, but she sounds clearly in intoxicated. And what her new lawyer, because she's on her seventh lawyer, what this what this new lawyer and the expert that they found, um, I just did a little bit of research into the expert. Um, I found a YouTube video. I believe it's Linda, du so D-U-R-R-E. Uh, she's a PhD licensed mental health clinician. So in the state of Florida, I, I don't know what her PhD is in. Um, so I am licensed as a, as a psychologist, I believe in the state of Florida, I believe, um, LM, uh, LMHC, that is their licensed mental health clinician. So I, I do not know Linda D-U-R-R-E, Dur, maybe. I, I don't know what, if she is a psychologist or a licensed mental health clinician. Um, cause I think in Florida it would be LPC would be the initials if she was a psychologist. Um, but she is an expert in the field of looking at toxic relationships. Um, I've saw, I, I saw a few YouTube videos and it didn't add much to the conversation. So that's why we're not, we're not showing them here. Um, but Sarah over and over again says she was not drunk. She does not drink too much. He's the one that that drinks that drinks too much. I can't get drunk. And I think that's why they want to bring in somebody to talk about uh, alcoholic blackouts. I'm going to make this bigger because this wording is a little small. And I will see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Because let's see what they might be trying to get at with this defense. Uh-oh. Okay, good. Interrupted memories, alcohol-induced blackouts. So drinking to the point of blacking out has, you know, gained pop culture nor nor notoriety in recent years. Alcohol-induced blackouts can lead to impaired memory of events that transpired while intoxicated. And I have a link to a YouTube video that I think did a good job kind of illustrating this. So normally our short-term memories, what happens like right now, the things I'm saying, it's originating using my, my prefrontal cortex. And then these memories are being processed and stored by my, by my hippocampus. All right. We are nerding out right here. That's, that's what happens. And there are certain neurotransmitters that are, um, that alcohol blocks that makes it difficult for some things to be stored and that's where some people cannot remember what what um, what happened. Now, alcohol will not make you do something in typically. So like normally if somebody drinks a little, it might if they normally are pretty shy and they wouldn't dance with, they might be more likely to dance in front of people. But if an individual wouldn't do what they did, like. Alcohol can sometimes take away the thinking part. That's um, and and I wonder if that's what what they're going to get at. And I do hope that the prosecution has a good rebuttal expert that explains that yes, while sometimes people can do things and they don't have memory of it, you're typically not going to do something that's outside of the realm of like what you what you're capable of. It's kind of like hypnosis where somebody can be suggested to do something, but like they can't be forced to do something that they would never, ever do. Those are my thoughts, my opinion. All right. Um, so what are uh, blackouts? They are gaps in a person's memory for events that occurred while intoxicated. These, ga these gaps happen when a person drinks enough alcohol to temporarily block the transfer of memories from short-term to long-term storage, known as memory consolidation. To the hippocampus. All right. There are different types of blackouts. So there's a fragmentary blackout that is characterized by spotty memories. And so sometimes they'll talk about these islands of memories. And then there is complete amnesia, often spanning hours, known as an in block blackout. All right. And so I have more information about this below. Uh, it typically, it's more likely to occur the higher the BAC, the blood alcohol content. Um, and so, yes. All right. Let's see. Let's see. All right. 
Let's share this one. Let me know if you all have questions and we will answer those. Let's make myself bigger again. There we go. Ugh. She is his rescuer. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Let me see. Let me see. Make sure I didn't miss anything. So I think it was mutual. So I see a comment by um, Angel Baby kind of saying that you thought that that uh, she was the one that was harming him in that in that situation. She kind of looks like the villain to me. Like to me, she looks like the menacing, sadistic villain who's getting revenge, in my opinion. OK, that's what it looks like. And I don't know that alcohol is the only reason why that why that happened. Like, I think that 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 existed. So I, I do think it's it's possible that it was mutual. It's really hard for men. And y'all, was he of um, Hispanic or was he of uh, Latinx uh, descent? Let me know if he was, because there are some people that won't report it against when it's the woman. So when so male D, so a harm that's done to males is often underreported. So let's think of Johnny Depp. I was like, to me, there were things that Amber Heard allegedly did to him where he could have reported her and he never did there. I think she like cut off the tip of his I mean, like there were there were allegations there. But he he would have never written something claiming to be the face of of DV because like often that's viewed as like negative. O often that's viewed as weak. And often to me, it often men feel like they're emasculated. So I have worked with male victims of DV before. Um, so male victims of SA, which is also underreported, and also DV. That is very, very, because we live in a very patriarchal system where we view men as very powerful and we view women in a certain way. And, and so guys could get, like, if, if a guy went to his, to his friends and was like, my wife is like, often people would look at him like, what? Like you, you, you can't handle that. Like, that's like, no, like this is not a safe situation. I don't think anyone should put their hands on anyone because often we treat, we teach boys to not put their hands on girls. Well, I teach my son and if I had a daughter, I would teach her, don't put your hands on anybody. <laughs> like, don't, I don't put my hands on you. You don't put your hands on anybody. <laughs> now, if you are defending yourself, if somebody is, is attacking you, please remember self-defense is a defense. <laughs> okay. So like, but like, it's a, it's an actual defense. Like you, you can still get charged if you claim self-defense. So like, if you can get safe, be safe, don't be around toxic people, all of, all of those things. <laughs> Y'all must've been going back and forth. Cause I'm, I missed, I'm gonna have to go back and watch the, the chat later. I have missed so much. Um, and I am going to get to the to the super chats at the end. I see them coming in. I appreciate it. Uh, Deacon Fatal, thanks for being a supporter for four months. And uh, yes, it this is this is what it seemed like to me. OK, it really seemed. Now, I don't know that she intended for him to not. I don't know that that was. I don't know that she was in her right mind to, to, I don't know that that was the intention, but I don't think she did anything to make sure it didn't happen. So, cause to me, it sounded like she was getting, so that's, that's the, that's the sadistic part. It seemed like she liked it and she was getting him back. Okay. Pretty sure. I, I thought so. I, I, I thought he was, and there can be, uh, machismo within um, the Latinx community, where it's even less likely to be to be report for a man to report that a woman is, and then also like she's also like I think she's she's pretty she's pretty on the lighter. I think she's European American, and she's always said things about him. Like if he ever did try to report something for her, 
I don't know if she would have told the truth of what happened. All right. Yes. I thank you. <laughs> yes. I think that that's definitely an aspect of this here. <laughs> All right. So we we are here for the learning. Okay, so good. We're gonna we're gonna nerd out a little bit more. Okay. So I'm gonna make myself small again so we can talk about personality disorders and DV. Okay. Uh links to everything are down below. All right. Now I try to find reputable sources. To me, this one seemed to have a lot of uh, really good sourcing and citing. So I, I do believe that the information in here is, is accurate. It's always my goal to share information that's both relevant and also accurate. So approximately one in four women and one in nine men in the U.S. have um, experienced some type of intimate partner harm. And um, someone with an... Uh, with a harmful personality disorder, narcissistic, for example, may not um, may not reach out for help for their uh, for their harmful behaviors. And so they did a study, and correlation doesn't mean causation. So be just because someone has, BPD doesn't mean that they are going to be no. like so correlation does not mean causation. And yet when we look at the jail population, there are certain personality disorders that are highly represented when, when, when we look at stuff like this. And so BPD, the one that surprised me was obsessive compulsive personality disorder, but I think that's the control. So obsessive but compulsive personality disorder. And that's why, so I hate when people are like, you're so OCD just because somebody likes to line things up and it's like, oh no, 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 that that is not OCD. <laughs> like I work with individuals that have OCD and like, so there is the, we used to have them in Axis. It's the, there's the main diagnosis that's not the personality disorder. That's very debilitating. Um, often an individual, they, it might be related to germs. It might be related to um, checking multiple things. It might be related to certain numbers. And OCD personality style is just more of, um, there. It's, it's not as intense as the, um, access one diagnosis where the individual might drive back around to their house nine times to check to make sure that the garage door is open. So um, often very highly successful people might have some obsessive traits like that's that's very common. Um, personality disorders are very, very complex and they can affect both men and women. Individuals with these conditions often feel intense emotions. When some people experience intense anger or rage, they may feel incapable of controlling these feelings. Physical aggression can be one of the outlets of that. Um, and it's not uncommon for uh, people diagnosed with personality disorders to have been victims of harm as children. And so that's very, very common. Um, I did a, a video on rejection sensitive dysphoria because that can be linked to ADHD. And but within personality disorders, there is a hypersensitivity to rejection or, or abandonment. Um, there can be poor social skills. Um, and so for some people might have hostility toward a particular gender. That's that's not across the board. That might just be some people. Um, high levels of dependence. I definitely think we see high levels of dependence in this case. Uh, controlling behaviors, heightened feelings of rage, and then also acts of mental or physical harm. Some signs to watch out for, routine criticizing, blaming the victim for their outbursts or behaviors, that's gaslighting, uh, makes unfounded accusations. Sometimes that can be projection and often the unfounded accusations, they might be doing it themselves. Like, well, it's, always watch out for that one. Throwing objects, punching walls or, or kicking furniture, um, physically harming their partner, preventing their partner from getting medical care, um, being aggressive towards household pets, um, preventing the partner from, singing, from seeing friends and family and isolating them, 
preventing partners access to money. We call that financial harm, uh, preventing the partner from working, forcing, um, and then more intimate things. All right. So I have the full link to that down below. So we have nerded out. Thank y'all. 170 of y'all. So this is going to be my new thing. We are going to be streaming Saturdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. I will normally Friday at some point on Friday. <laughs> no, no guarantee exactly when. Some point on Friday, I will post uh, what the what the topic will be normally on Wednesday or Thursday, because sometimes I start getting ideas and I'll try to get y'all's feedback on something to, to prepare for for the video. I so I wanted to talk about the Adelsons. And then I saw the the lawyer you know's video covering the the um this new attorney. So the new attorney has filed for a mental health psychologist or psychiatrist to um to evaluate battered woman syndrome, domestic violence, uh personality disorders, and we're not sure if we're talking about her or the victim. Uh uh, battering husbands, that's a new one, oh, um, battering husbands, and then also alcoholic blackouts. And that was the new one that was added, the alcoholic blackouts. And um, we just, that some of this might at least be a mitigating factor, because I do think that cell phone video that she recorded, that is extremely harmful for, for her case. Let's go on ahead and get to the super chats. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Uh, Sarah, you're awesome. Check out Dreading. Ooh, did episode on Brian, her ex. Okay, I will have to check that out. Thank you. Thank you. Buttercup, I appreciate the super sticker. Thank you. And thank you, I saw, uh, Amber. I saw you thank her for that. Or help my babe. I'm assuming pronouns. I saw you thank them for that. I apologize if I got a pronoun wrong. Um Deacon Fatal, just getting this out there while we're taking a break. Love learning. Yes, yes. And are we still doing the cartoon thingy for some breaks? Oh, wait a minute. What what cartoon thingy? Uh-oh. Did I say I was going to do a cartoon thingy? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Did I say something? I don't think. Was that for me? What What cartoon thingy? I don't know. Deacon, you have to, you have to, you have to let me know. Oh, <laughs> so wait a minute. I, put, I clicked the wrong one. So this is my book. Uh, I still clicked the wrong one. Good gosh. There we go. I am a professional. I love that from Emily D. Baker's stream. So um, turning crisis into clarity, how to survive or thrive in the midst of uncertainty. That is my book. It's currently on sale on my website, a signed copy, or you can get it on Amazon. I like audio. I like audible. I don't read books. It's my processing. I like to hear books. That's something that's a lot more interesting for me. And I want to share because I want to say it was Phoenix. It was definitely Phoenix left a phenomenal review of the book on the community tab. And so just give me a second to pull that up and I will share that. Um, let me know if y'all have any last minute questions. We are wrapping it up. Y'all know I go from talking about things to being like, all right, I'll, <laughs> I will, I will shut it down in a moment. Yes. Here we go. Let's share. Is it this tab? Uh oh, I have to find my tab again. Mm, there are so many tabs open. If y'all could see the tabs, it must be like 10. <laughs> I have so many tabs open. Okay, here we go. Share this tab instead. All right. So Phoenix, to anyone who hasn't gotten a copy, I was so lucky to I was so lucky to win a copy. I'm going through some major uncertainty and I go back to it and read something over and over. So often the book is starting to look like my old high school textbooks. Perfect. Yes. Uh, that had survived a generation of students. Give yourself an awesome present and treat yourself to Dr. Barry's book. I guess if I could describe it, it's like that favorite cookbook. I love that. Phoenix, Phoenix, I absolutely love that. 
Mine is a Reader's Digest that covers all the basic guidelines for baking, roasting, basic sauces, etc. So I call it a resource, okay? So the book is broken down into just surviving. Just like if you're just in survival mode, let's just survive. And then part two breaks down thriving. And it really is broken down to be um, in digestible nuggets so that people really can get it. And there's no one book that's going to do everything. So I have some of my favorite books. I wrote it back in 2020 to 2021. It came out back in 2021. And I really appreciate you all. Uh, you read through it to get the concepts, but you keep reading for it. Um, you keep reaching for it when you need to refresh your memory. Yep. <laughs> that works. Dr. Barry, how to be prepared for the curveball. Thank you, Phoenix. That was that was really awesome. Um, I so appreciate this community. I cannot say more about it. This is why I do this. Okay, like it is this community. I'm gonna upgrade my mic. So next Saturday, I should have a new mic. And so I'm gonna play with it and like work out. So hopefully everything works. <laughs> we are professionals. We really are. <laughs> uh, oh, you have um, your your dog is or is, is that it? I can't see. Yeah, I'm not even gonna. Y'all y'all go back and forth in the chat, and and I love it. <laughs> Thirty seven tabs open. Yes. So I'm only going live, scheduling going live on Saturdays. Okay. So I'm just scheduling for Saturdays. It, I might have a pop-up live here or there. I really, I appreciate the feedback. So people were like, anytime I would go live, people would be like, oh, I didn't know you were going live. And so I'm scheduling them for, um, for Saturdays. And then I'm going to premiere a video Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. And we will go from there. I have no clue what I'm, so I might do, maybe I'll record the Adelson video. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I get inspiration and then I, and then I end up doing it. It really was a great review. Phoenix, so glad you were here. <laughs> you had your book with coffee this morning. That's so often. Yeah. So the favorite cookbook, like really, like that was, that was a really good analogy. Phoenix, I'm, I'm going to steal that and, and give you credit. Okay. I, I always give people credit. So I don't mind admitting um, inspiration. Deacon Fatal, if you're still here. So I did watch the Cat Williams interview over on Club Shay. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, don't. It, it has millions. I think in one day, I think it had 13 million views or something. It's two two hours and 45 minutes of just Cat Williams going in on everybody. Like it was just like, and parts of it seemed to be humor. I, I don't know how to take all of it. It was, it was a lot. I'm not planning to do, to do a video on it. It was, it was, it was a lot. Um, let me see. You should definitely have a discussion on Gypsy Rose newfound fame. So I don't, but to me, that feeds into it. Does that make sense? So I, I did a video on her and um, I don't, I don't know if I can, if I can do, because I think she's, I, and to me, that's what, that's what her mom did to her. But I think she wants to be famous and she is like, she has millions of followers in like, ju just a few days. She has, last time I checked, I think she had like 6 million on Instagram and it's, it's probably more, more than, than that now. And, um, I wish her all the best. I just, I, I did comment because I follow Grizzly True, True Crime. Uh, and she is amazing. Um, I am a grizzly and she posted that she was concerned that the husband was the one that was kind of pushing a lot of this. And I don't, I don't think it's the husband. I think she, she honestly, like she wants to meet Taylor Swift. And I think a lot of this is kind of coming from her. And so um, I'm going to try to find the link to the Cat Williams, Shannon Sharp. So I can just put it. Oh, no, no, that's not the one. 24 million views. It is, it is messy. So Cat Williams, the gist of it is that he, Shannon Sharp, let me share this tab. 
Because <laughs> this is this is all I'm going to say about it. Unless y'all have a question about mental health. Cat Williams said he doesn't have any mental health diagnoses. And okay. Uh, and so, and I have no, I don't know him. I uh, I do think he, he is a genius. I, I do think he is very, very intelligent. And sometimes very intelligent people can can be misunderstood, but he dodged some questions. It was, it was a lot. So here is the interview. I will put a link to it in the stream, but uh, there are memes of it on social media now because like, so like pretty much every famous comedian, a lot of the famous, especially the, the black comedians, a lot of Cat Williams has some thoughts and he shares all of them, all of them on, on that podcast. And I don't have any additional thoughts about it. So, okay. Uh, it's a something. <laughs> it's something. Hey, on the medical side, but psychiatry. Yay. Yes. So I know, um, cause I sometimes help my clients formulate what questions they have for their psychiatrist or for their medical provider or for their psychiatric nurse practitioner. And so, um, welcome, welcome. I can't with the views. It's shocking. I'm doing a short. Nice. Yeah. Like it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. It was a lot. Um, oh my. So, um, Nick, I watched Nick go to John is the boyfriend in the gypsy Rose case. And I do hope that he gets another, another trial. I don't know that it's fair that she gets to be free. And like, in my opinion, I think she egged him on. Like, I think, I think she kind of manipulated him. And so, and that's, that's my opinion, my thoughts. So this is a very popular opinion here, Amber. Very, 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 very popular opinion here. I would highly recommend a very, very good therapist and to not be in the limelight, to not be seeking fame, because once again, like she's she's always had that fame. Like to me, that's what her mom did. And I hope she breaks that cycle. Um, cognitively, I think you're talking about Gypsy Rose. She had to grow up a lot. She talked about that she had to wear diapers, I think. So I, I haven't watched the special. I, if the special's come out yet, I, I haven't watched it. I did watch portions of the Natalia Grace. I thought part two, you don't have to watch part one. Part one is a mess. <laughs> part one of the Natalia Grace series, if you are going to watch it, just skip it. Just skip right to part two where Natalia actually tells tells her story. I got to the second episode and I was like, yep, that's, I, it was, it was good enough. Uh, thank you, Karen. You can also put, I have some, some commands, which I will talk with people about next time. Nightbot does some, some things. So we have Grizzlies. We have a ton of law nerds. We have lawyer chicklets. Um, I, I don't think Law and Lumber, I don't think his crew has a name, but there's definitely support from there. Uh, there is support from a lot of different channels. I agree. The best comedians are super smart, are definitely super smart. So if he does, so if you're talking about Cat Williams, if he does, then he would technically be twice exceptional. So twice exceptional is where someone who's very gifted also has ADHD. And I don't know that he does. Okay. I have never assessed him. Sometimes people who I, I, I would have to do an assessment because there would have to be some type of deficit where his other functioning, his verbal and nonverbal functioning is very high. But then the 
memory processing speed or his executive function was was lower. I, I haven't seen any signs that 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 um that he does. All my favorite people do have ADHD, so like it wouldn't surprise me if if he did. <gasps> Who is Cat Williams? He let me you you saw the picture though. So uh, he has been in a bunch of movies. He's a famous comedian. Uh, he says some controversial stuff. If you don't, you don't have to watch that. Like it's, it's, you kind of have to know what's going on to watch. So if, if you don't know who he is, don't worry about watching that. You could maybe watch the, the replay. I don't know. Um, but that is, that is a lot. Um, all right. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, yes. Eddie Murphy, Kevin Hart, and Robin Williams are your favorites. So peace out, Lisa, if you have not seen. So he says some not so great things about Kevin Hart in that interview. <laughs> he says a lot of, he has some thoughts. So I liked, I watched uh, Kevin Hart and Chris Rock they did a documentary. It's not their special. Okay. They did a documentary just kind of covering the behind the scenes of their, of their tour. And, um, and, and I enjoyed that. So did you already see the video I did on Gypsy Rose? Cause I already did one. <laughs> so please go watch it. If you haven't seen it, if y'all have questions, if y'all have questions, let, let me know. And I have one more super chat I need to get to before we head out. My child, I'm pretty sure he's playing on his Switch right now because at 3 p.m. he might have come in to get his um, his his iPad. The Switch has a time limit on it, <laughs> so once he reaches that time li limit, he would he would be coming to to try to find me or or dad. And so um, let's get to the last super chat. Oh, thank you, Elaine. I appreciate each and every one of you. And we're saying Elaine in a positive way. And we're not telling Elaine to turn on her mic. <laughs> I love it when EDB screams that. Elaine, I, I, I love that. <laughs> and so um, you all are phenomenal. You all are amazing. Y'all go. <laughs> so that's, I really like, the Switch has phenomenal parental controls. Okay. Phenomenal. And he gets, so I'll be honest, he gets three and a half hours, like three and a half hours is a long time. <laughs> it's a Saturday. And so that's why he gets a little bit of extra time. And that's for all day. <laughs> Mommy has to stream for a little bit. <laughs> and so, yes, I, I can only hear it the way, the way Emily D. Baker says it. Like I can, I can only hear it that way. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoy the rest. I will see y'all on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Have a good one. Bye.